There's Ryan and Walter Bridal. Oh my god, that's so cute. Look at all the dresses in the window. Hey guys. I don't know who to hug first. Hi everyone, it's Lily Galici Mirror, and welcome to my new YouTube video, Meet My Wedding Dress! Since my wedding dress can't actually talk, meet my wedding dress designers. Ryan and Walter from Ryan and Walter Bridal. Today we are going to answer all the questions that you guys have about my wedding dress, or I guess I should say dresses. So this is the dress that I walked down the aisle in. This is my main wedding dress. It's actually two pieces. Many people don't know that. The top is like a bustier type top that corsets up the back. And the bottom is a Cinderella ball skirt. The reason why we created it as two pieces is because the skirt, well, the dress itself is really heavy. So Very. it has to be a skirt with the bustier detachable or else the entire dress would pull her down. Another thing that was great in terms of having it be two pieces in terms of if she ever wanted to have an outfit change or remove the upper layer of the beading, it would be something quickly that she could just remove. Which we did do. We changed quite a few times, so having it as two separate pieces made it quick and easy. So the dress is a corset back. I wanted a corset top because I wanted to snatch my waist in comparison to the skirt. And what snatching means, if you really like are that out of the loop, <laughs> it just means I wanted my waist to be as tiny as possible, and the best way to do that is to tie it in. To start off, Lily already has a tiny waist, but now with the corset, we were able to kind of even snatch her even more, and in comparison to the drama of the skirt, her waist looks like it's like 12 inches. Lily did mention that she wanted a sweetheart neckline, but how low the sweetheart was going to go was something that we all kind of had to play around with. We made three different muslin options in the start of the process, and Lily chose the deepest, lowest low. <laughs> <laughs> Walter chose the second one. I knew that the third one, which was the most modest, was going to be the one that we were going to decide with. I was trying to find a good compromise, but literally the minute she, we decided to go backwards, so the, the deepest went first, and she, that's the one she loved, and we are like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why we ended up going with a pretty modest neckline is because her fiancé is a little bit more conservative. Love you. But in the end of the day, it is more couture, it is more high fashion, and it just, it, it's more timeless, which is, you know, more true to our aesthetic of our brand. We prefer our brides to be more timeless, to look more elegant, and then, you know, look down at your pictures 20 years from now and still love what you just like. Absolutely. There are a million opportunities in your life for you to be sexy. I think that your wedding day is one opportunity for you to just be beautiful and elegant. So we ixnayed the low top. Even the final dress that we made, after doing some photos in it, we decided we didn't want any cleavage to show at all. They hired the neck even more to be super conservative, and I still think it's sexy. Even though the original intent was to make it more conservative, at the end of the day, it just makes it more fashionable and timeless. The silhouette overall is still sexy, so I feel like you still got the full sexy look without showing too much. Absolutely. So a lot of you guys want to know if the dress is comfortable. No, I'm going to be real. <laughs> this shit is hurting just standing here. How am I going to get up? <laughs> this was me half of the wedding. Whenever I had a moment off, I just squatted to the floor because then all the weight of the dress is no longer on my body. To try to turn. Ah! Ah! It isn't easy to move in, but this also isn't bustled. And because it's beaded, I mean, this thing is has thousands and thousands of beads and pearls and everything else. It's 
fucking heavy. So when you have all that weight behind you from the train, you just can't move. Once it's bustled, it is a lot easier to move in. And I did my first dance in this. After you and Dara did your first dance, you started jumping and I, I just remember looking at her and I'm like, how is she doing that? <laughs> <laughs> but to enhance on the beating, so one of the main things that Lily really wanted for her main wedding gown was to sparkle. Sparkle. She didn't know what we had to do. All she told us is that she wanted it to sparkle. So all, every single bead that you see here is hand beaded and that's what contributes to a lot of the weight of the dress. Speaking of the beading, another thing everyone wants to know is how long did it take to make this dress and how many people did it take? So it took about 45 hand sewers and thousands and thousands of hours, endless times of just, you know, hand sewing all the glass beads and pearls to the lace. Okay, the next thing everyone wants to know, how much was the dress? She basically just gave us her credit card. Oh my God. Spare no expenses, this is my one day. Like, it needs to be special. In my defense, I didn't want to look back on my wedding and have regrets. I've spent money on things that, you know, aren't as significant. I'm getting married once in my life. I want to show my kids that. I want to show my grandkids that. So I wanted it to be epic and exactly what I wanted. But realistically, in terms of an exact price, it's hard to quantify. A design in, within this magnitude can range between 50,000 to a half a million, just depending on what hand bead work and the amount of people and the time frame that it, it comes down to. And before you freak out and say, oh my God, I don't have $50,000 to half a million, they can make almost exact looking dress within a budget. So for example, my lace was flown in from France. All of my crystals are Swarovski crystals. I gave them one month to make the dress. So they had multiple shifts, working day, night, overtime. You can get a similar looking dress for, I would say a fraction of the cost right. by using, you know, local materials and giving them nine to 12 months to make your dress like normal brides do. With all of our brides, they always, if they have a specific budget, they always communicate that for, with us and we can always usually make give them the options that would be available within their budget. A budget is a great thing to have, ladies. Start with that when you meet with your designers or when you go into a store if you're just buying a dress so that you can go in and say, this is the maximum I wanna spend and this is what my dream dress would be and they can help you find what will be the best for your budget. And regardless of your budget, we will make you look fabulous. And it's we'll true. Make sure you look like your best on your special day. So this is Lily's second dress. Let's talk a little bit more about the details. We love the kimono sleeves. We wanted it to be like a statement, but at the same time, it's not very practical, especially when it comes to dancing, especially for Persian dancing. They're so heavy, guys. Like. <laughs> It's difficult just to raise my arms, but I really wanted that dramatic moment. So let's show all your viewers uh, how you bustle it. Hidden within the sleeves, there are two small hooks that get hooked onto the back of the dress. And just, just like that, the, dress, the sleeves are bustled, which gives her a lot more movement in terms of dancing, and it also makes it look really pretty. Yeah. So, so even though it's something we did to make it practical, it came out looking stunning. And because the sleeves are now clipped up, all the weight is gone. Now it's light as a feather because the weight is being anchored here. So another thing is we were talking about different outfits and different changes. Like this itself is like a different outfit look. It's kind of a second look. I didn't get to wear it very long with the sleeves down just because it was mid party and I wanted to dance. Yeah. So besides the sleeves, we also had a bustle for the train. As you can all see, just within 30 seconds, we have a full on different look. And now it's short, so people aren't stepping on me. I can dance, I can move, I can party. <laughs> it was my wedding. So this is really my third dress. And how we went from the third to fourth dress is as easy as this. Super easy. We literally just unhooked the closures right at the waistband. and. Ta-da! Now we have a fourth dress. And this is the final dress I wore that I partied all night in. Another thing that we loved about this dress, not only does it showcase her silhouette, but it's very easy to move in. It's really easy to dance on the dance floor. Another thing about this dress, all this that you see here that gives you the illusion that it's her skin. It's just flesh colored fabric that kind of looks like it's see-through, but it's not. And just like my first dress, we did a corset back. 
And with the corset back, it really gives you freedom in terms of how tight or how loose you want it. So when it comes to photos, you can always make it extra little bit tight. And then as far as the end of this dress, I wanted no train at all because this was gonna be the final dress that I wear that I partied in all night. So this was my fourth and final wedding dress. Okay, so the final thing everyone wants to know, how much does the dress weigh? This is the full 19 foot detachable train. Keep in mind, my dress already has a 10 foot built in train. <gasps> So this is just another added 19 feet. Ah, I think I got fatter since the wedding. I know it's so extra, but tell me this is not everything. Oh, I fall more and more in love with it every time I see it. Should we get photos? Step up. Oh! Go on. What is it? 189. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, that's insane. I have to let it go. Oh, oh my god. Look at my hand. Okay, pictures. 